Hi, everyone. Carmine Danisco here with the Launch Network. We are on the launch pad. I have a favorite today. Awesome. We've been waiting to catch up. She's been really, really busy. Uh, this, um, I want to say, pandemic has been cooping people up. People are really sitting home. They don't want to be home, but they are. And what are they doing? They're shopping. They're shopping on TV. Mm -hmm. They're shopping online. And Marcy McKenna, has been talking to them. Marcy, how's it going? Hello, Carmine. It's going great. How are you? I'm doing awesome. So great to have you on the show. I want the listeners to know, Marcy and I have been talking for like 45 minutes, just <laughs> turning the cameras on, right, Marcy? <laughs> we're like, shoot, we actually need to record this. <laughs> I know. We were talking about some great stuff, and now we're recording. But uh, Marcy, you've been really busy, I, and we were, we were supposed to catch up, um, I don't know, probably like a month ago. And I mixed up the times. Uh, I don't know what happened. Marcy's over on the West Coast, which is cool in some ways. And uh, how's it going over there on the West Coast? You guys uh, suffering through the pandemic, as I would say? We are suffering through. Um, I will say at the moment for me, or not just for me, for people, I think it is getting a little scarier. Um, a lot of our hospitals are full. I have a friend whose grandmother um, has COVID, who's, she's 93, and she just oh. got sent home from the hospital because there are no beds. So, you know, the reality of that starts to set in. Um, we're not as locked down as um, I think it probably appears in the media, at least where I live. I'm seeing more, you know, people eating out, you know, outdoor restaurants are open, things like that. Um, but it's, you know, we are not out of the woods by any stretch. Wow. I'm very thrilled with the um, vaccination. Just we need more of it <laughs> so yes. that we can all have it. Um, but, you know, God willing, hopefully uh, we'll turn a corner here soon. Yeah, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, it's uh, It's been a crazy year. And hopefully, as obviously, things will and always do get better. We just wanted to get better sooner. But you've yeah. been um, busy on the air. Can you tell us a little bit about mm. what's been happening? Some of the products. I, I mean, you've yeah. been busy. I have been busy. And, you know, uh, if there is a silver line to the pandemic um, in my world, it's, you know, home shopping is doing very well right now. Um, I have a product line on HSN. Um, some of you may know it. Um, was primarily travel products, which is not a great thing during the pandemic, as you can imagine. Um, but it has forced, and I hate to use this cliche term because it's used so much right now, but it's true. Um, it has forced me to pivot for sure. And so it um, had me really look at my product line and start to realize that my products really aren't just for travel at all. They're just as much for home as they are for travel. So it's been interesting for me to sort of reimagine the messaging around my products. Um, really at their core, my products are about keeping us organized and making life easier, um, whether you're at home or whether you're traveling. So a really good example of that is during the pandemic, um, sort of a hero product of mine that HSN was very excited about uh, was my beauty case, which <laughs> you're seeing back here in the background. Nice. Um, and it was originally a travel case. And but a travel case that was highly organized. It's all customizable. There's tons of bells and whistles to it that keep you really organized. But when I slowed down and thought about it, I realized, gosh, this is not at all just a travel case. This is a case that streamlines your entire beauty routine into one compact, compact place. So on one side is your skincare, on the other side is your makeup. Everything is beautifully displayed. You're getting ready in half the time because it's all so organized and you know right at your fingertips. So when I'm on air at HSN with this product, which we almost pulled because of that, um, I don't talk about travel at all. It really is about home. And that's how I'm using my case right now. I actually have a few of them I'm using in different ways. Um, but it resonated. And I think people are, you know, we're all nesting. We all want to be organized. So it really spoke to women that are at home. We all have lots of beauty products and lots of makeup, and this made their lives easier during this difficult time. And it wow. became um, one of the top items in Q4 for HSN. So that was really exciting. So we had a lot of shows, a lot of airtime, um, a lot of, you know, big orders came after it for spring and then more for summer. So um, it's been exciting. And it just, you know, that's a good testament to, you know, instead of giving up and being deflated because something turns in your business, it's reimagining it, rethinking it, and, you know, having it propel you in a positive direction rather than looking at it as a negative. 
Yeah. Wow. You know, it seems like somebody like yourself, somebody who I want to say adventurous, obviously doing live TV is, is so, I don't even, wouldn't even want to do that, but <laughs> it seems like when we're up against that kind of adversity, you know, it may slow us down for a bit, but it seems like then you're propelled and, and you've, you know, it just brings out really that, that knowledge, that experience that the, the best parts of us, I don't know. It just seems like, you know, when we're up against that adversity, you know, we always come out better off. Absolutely. I, I mean, honestly, when I think of my greatest achievements and, you know, the greatest feelings I've ever had, it came from moments like that, where I was forced to, to dig deep, to pick myself up, dust myself off and make something happen, make lemons out of lemonade or the other way around <laughs> lemonade out of lemons um but that is so true and so i i just hope that everyone is taking that message right now and you know there's a lot of you know negative stuff going on but but it's also really cool to see all the different businesses that are changing and pivoting and you know rethinking the way they do things and coming out stronger because of it mm. and you know everything happens for a reason and and so trying to find that and you know figure out how to to get there i think is um it's the only way to go yeah yeah you know and as an inventor as a product developer and you've been doing this for a while um do you get people that approach you and say hey hey marcy i have this idea i have this product you know what should i do next every day <laughs> 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 no, I do. And, and I say that, um, I didn't mean that to sound negative no, because it's really one of my favorite parts about what I do. I love hearing all these cool ideas and I love talking to people that have those wheels spinning and are constantly coming up with new things. So that's, that's super fun. Um, and we were talking earlier, you know, during the pandemic, it, it has given me, um, a chance to pause and, and take some time and, think about giving back and helping others and, you know, learning about what new inventor challenges are. For me, I really started inventing um, as a career about 10 years ago. And so thinking back to where was I 10 years ago and what would have been helpful for me? And so I'm kind of on this kind of crusade and this mission to help other people that are now where I was 10 years ago. And you and I've talked a lot about the fact that I have a special place in my heart for women and realizing how few women um, are filing patents. And, you know, I know the statistic right now is only 8% of the patents filed in our country are done so by women. And that's it was just shocking to me. And I'm, why? And so I, you know, spent some time really digging deep to, to understand that. And, and I really want to teach and empower and inspire women. We have the best ideas. We are multitasking all day, every day, wearing so many different hats. And so we're solving problems but women are afraid to take that step to take their solution and turn it into a product and get it out there and create, you know, a living and a life for themselves. Mm. So I, I just kind of want to break down that, what seems like a daunting process for women and men, but um, I'm just, you know, really focused on, on females when I saw that statistic um, and show that it's not as hard as it looks on the outside. And, and when you take those steps and Carmine, you're so good at, explaining what those steps are and breaking it down like that, it, anyone can do this. Um, you know, so it's, it's something that I really am excited about. And, you know, what I'm, I'm trying to create some different um, resources and things that I can share with people um, to, to help them on their journeys. Yeah, that's, it's so great. And, and, and without me sounding sexist to men or women, I noticed that myself, a lot of our clients here, um, that are women, they come in and they're so organized and they have, they know exactly what they want. They know the color codes, they know the size, they know, oh, I want to cross stitch or whatever the product is. I love when women come in because they are, they, they have it. A man comes in and goes, here, I want this. And throws his picture on the ground, you know, yeah. which is fine too, and it's fun. But yeah, I've always wondered that myself. And that's why when we were talking, I was like, yeah, what is it that is, is it because, you know, years ago, which was crazy to me that, you know, these, these old white guys were inventors, do, you know, are they, do, do we look like, you know, is it, everybody thinks an inventor is like an Einstein in a, in a lab or, you know, women have unbelievable products. It, it, yeah. It's amazing to me. And I wish like you could reach out and just say, come on, you can do it. Right. Right. You know, I think there's a lot of reasons for it. I, I personally believe um, you have a point there in the sense that when I think back to when I started, I was intimidated by this, in my view, 
what was a very male skewed world of inventing. And I did look at some YouTube videos that were teaching, you know, how to do things. And they were, you know, hardcore men. Um, and it was just a little intimidating. And then I started to see some of these invention submission or promotion companies. That was even more intimidating to me because, um, and I'm glad it was, because I'm glad I didn't go down that path. But, um, you know, again, those typically, I find that those companies are dominated by men. Um, and I just heard so many horror stories about, you know, the, the crazy amounts of money that they charge and, you know, what do you get in the end for it? And I think as women, we're like, we're going to be gun shy to things like that, um, where uh, to your point, we, we like to have all our ducks in a row. We like to know what's what. And so because of that, I think women end up with these great ideas and they get excited and mm. then they start to dig into that or dive into that world. And they, you know, they, they get scared and it, they pull back because of that. So, um, you know, I'm just hoping to be able to kind of be a bit of a safe haven for women where they can, you know, reach out to me and I can provide resources that they feel comfortable with and um, that they can see that, you know, th these are the processes that I'm using. This is what I do. Take it for what you will. Um, but if there's any way for me to help that statistic of 8% turn that thing upside down, I am all about it. Yeah, it's, you know, and when I think of that being in this business, I, I think of you, I think of Lord Guineer, Sarah Blakely, and these are huge and yourself, these are product developers, they're business people. I mean, it's amazing to me that, you know, and again, I think it's terrible that there's still that thought. And, and I think that however I can help, it's, I think that your crusade is going to be huge because we need to have a way for people to feel safe feel trusted that we're going to take them seriously, that no matter who they are, male, female, child, whatever, if they have an idea, we are going to take them seriously and help them move forward in the right way. And that's the most important thing, right? Because if you go to the wrong person or somebody doesn't take it seriously and they tell you, oh, go do this, it's very easy to get discouraged in this business, right? Yes, very much so. Um, you brought up one of my favorite um, entrepreneurial role models, and that's Sarah Blakely. And um, what I love about Sarah is she is such a, a, a risk taker and doesn't care what people think and um, does things her own way, doesn't necessarily, um, you know, follow these books that you might buy that have step by step, you know, she, uh, I forget the exact terminology that she used, but something like if you could throw away everything you know about the way your job is supposed to be done, how would you do it? And the truth is, when I heard her say that, I thought, that's exactly what I did in the beginning, because I didn't know what I didn't know. And so I just did what I thought would be the right way to get my, for instance, product on in the home shopping world or to license a product. I was guessing. And when you do that, when you don't necessarily follow these, you know, shoulds, it's amazing what can happen. And when you kind of kick fear to the curb and just go for it. And, you know, put one foot in the front of the other every single day without worrying what people are going to, the men are going to think or the, um, you know, the naysayers. It's amazing what can happen. And yeah. she, you know, she really preaches that. And, and when I listen, I think, God, that was so much how I felt and what I accidentally did in the beginning. And so I, I believe in that wholeheartedly. Yeah, you know, that's great. It's funny that you said it because. I think any inventor who has cut through that, has broken through that worry of what people think, mm -hmm. I, I think we all have that, that same feeling. You know, we yeah. hold on to, we, we resonate with someone who has broken through and, and it, it, it's the coolest feeling to see your product on, you know, on the store shelf or see somebody using your product. And that's what I want everyone to realize and look to. Don't worry about yeah. what somebody's gonna think because like you, there's probably people that like your product there's people that didn't like your product, but that's okay, right? Yeah. And that's, I mean, in this world, it's everything is about reviews right now. So, I mean, it's it's really interesting to go up and look at the reviews and some of them are great, some of them not so great. I actually love the not so great reviews yeah. now because that teaches me about how I want to change my product the next time. And um, any time I am thinking about developing a new product, that's one of the first things I do is look at other products that are in the same space. And I'll search all over the internet for bad reviews because I wanna know what those products are that are out there, what they're doing wrong and how I can do it better. Like I already have in my mind what I wanna do with the product. 
Um, many times it's a better mousetrap. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's completely new, but when it is a better mousetrap, it's so worth taking the time to find out straight from the horse's mouth what's not working about what's out there in the marketplace. Wow, that's so, so smart I, because it's kind of like you you're, you have the other team's playbook. You're looking at right. what they, hey, now if, <laughs> we can do this all day. Whenever you're talking, yeah. I get so many ideas. Now, <laughs> do, you, do you think, I get so many people come here and they want to be first to market. And I'm like, it, first of all, it's very expensive to be first to market. It's very expensive to change people's minds. Is, is it that important or is it better to, like you said, look back there and just make a better mousetrap? You know, I think both are important, um, but I would say first to market is not necessarily my strategy um, and maybe not, not on purpose, but to, for every reason that you just said, I mean, if, if it's not already being done, there might be a reason it's not ah, already being done. That's point. And that's, you know, and so you're getting ready to forge a whole new market and convince people that they have a problem that they don't know they have. And that's a <laughs> major uphill battle. So if you, if you're thinking about making a product and you can instead look at those categories that are really screaming right now, and there are so many resources out there to find out what those categories are. And if you are that mind that is always thinking of new ideas and better ways of doing things, then that's where I would start is finding those niches that um, are really on the upswing and then look at what, what's going on in those niches and how can you re, reimagine either what's already in them or how can you bring something new into that that maybe they haven't seen, but it's at least it's already an established category that's doing well and people are hungry for products within that category. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I totally agree and with you that. You are you know, way ahead of than um, to forge your, your own. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. It, 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 the reason that I was saying that is because you just gave somebody who was going to take a class, we're going to hire a consultant. I mean, you just basically told them this is the best way to approach it. I mean, it, you, you you could tell you're doing this, you've done it. That it yeah, that's what I'm doing. Uh, the other thing is, um, I you know, I I mentioned that I don't, that I love the bad reviews, but I also love the good review. You know, they're both equally important. So the fact is when you're, when you're going and looking at a category like that, the main thing you want is a lot of reviews. That means this is a category that people are actually buying in. So you want a lot. Looking at what's great about things is super important, but it's, it's that detective work that I wanna preach about because so many people, I think bypass this product validation stage. And I believe it is the single most important stage in developing any product idea or any product. And so many of us bypass it completely, either because we don't wanna hear what we're gonna find, we're too afraid of what we might find out. Um, what if it already exists? That always scares people. But if it already exists, like we're talking about, I think that's a win. That means we're doing, you know, that someone else has already validated the market. Now I'm going to do it better. Um, so this stage, and I have a whole sort of five-step formula that I've always used. I shouldn't say always. It, it developed over the first couple of years of my career in inventing. Um, but it has served me so well. And it's, you know, I've developed and um, successfully launched, I think, over 30 products now into big box retail and home shopping using this and I, I look back and I think if I didn't go through this product validation stage, how many of those products oh. would have been successful? And very few, because you've got to you've got to hear those hard answers about, you know, not only would people buy it, but what would they pay for it? You know, if if it was out there. And I do, you know, there's so much great technology now to help you. I do things like um, I'll create a sales page for a product that doesn't even exist uh -huh. just to see, because you know you can talk to your mom and your dad and your brother and your sister and your best friend and ask if they'll buy it and what are they gonna tell you? Of course they will. But if you can create a sales page and then buy some, you know, a low cost, couple low cost Facebook ads, just to see how many would click to buy it if it existed, that's huge because that's very real data that will either encourage you to invest the time and money because this is something that is you know, really um, resonating and converting or it's going to save you mm. so much time and so much money because nobody's clicking. 
Yeah. And what you do, what I do anyway, is um, if I have a product idea, I kind of have a good idea of what it's going to look like, how it's going to function. I will hire a rendering company to create a 3D photorealistic rendering of the product so it looks like it exists. And then you essentially create a sell sheet for it that you that you turn into a sales page. And then, like I said, you'll, I mean, I can put it up on Pinterest to see how many, you know, what's my click through on Pinterest, what's my click through on Facebook. And from there I'll know, yeah, this is a this is a hero, let's go for it. Or this would be a waste of time and money, and I better kick this one to the curb. So um I just, you know, those steps are so, they take a little bit of time and a little bit of money, but so worth it. So yeah. worth it in the end. That's, uh, that's great advice. I, I, I agree with you hundred percent. I love, that's why I love talking to you because sometimes the way I do things, I'm not sure if it's the right way. And then when I hear somebody like yourself talking about almost the same thing, I'm like, okay, I'm not that far off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. Validation. If, yeah. Yeah. And for any of them that's listening, the click through is just somebody like, uh, like Marcia said, they go to the website and they click buy now or they pick send me more for send me more for info, whatever that button is, whatever that call to action is that you want. It's that, that click through, getting people to click on that button. And it's so important to do that. Kind of like a Kickstarter, kind of like when these Indiegogo goes, but they're not doing anything. You're just kind of testing the market. But it's very right. important because as Marcy said, and, and I want to talk a little bit about the review stuff, but as Marcy said, um, we could love this product. Everyone loves it. Everyone tells you a little bit. But when you get somebody that you don't know, it's going to take money out of their pocket and buy your product. That's the real test, right, Marcy? Yes. Well, <laughs> and when you said um, you could, you know, set it up in a way like send me more information, that's not good data, in my opinion. Yeah. Because okay. you're be exactly what you just said, that you're not asking them to actually take money. That's put true. their money where their mouth is. So for yeah. me, it's the buy now click that's important. Uh -huh. And so what I do is when they buy, um, I'm sorry that this product is not currently in stock. Oh. Um, if you're, uh, if you, you can sign up to join the wait list and we'll let you know as soon as it's in stock, which is the truth is it's not in stock yet. It's coming. Um, but what that does, number one, you find out if they would buy, if it was available and for how much you can, you can test it at different price points and things. But the second thing it does is it gives you an email address of someone that is highly interested in your product. So you're building your audience for this product before you even develop the product. That's huge. And I think that's something that so many inventors miss. We get so caught up in the patenting and prototyping and that whole hamster wheel. We pay no attention to how we're going to get it out there once it's created. Yeah. And that's why I believe one of the big reasons that there is a 95% failure rate when it comes to products. That's not okay. I mean, we've got to fix that. And so if we can teach people these, you know, these tips, these real world tips, you know, people that we're actually doing this, we're out there creating products, putting them on television. This is how we do it. And we want to share it with you so that you can take advantage of all of these years that we've spent or that I've spent trial and error and figuring out systems and processes that work. And that's one of them. And I, um, you know, I really believe in that. And I believe in the importance of doing that before you spend any money or yeah. any sizable amount of money and time. Well, it totally makes sense. I mean, why would you want to make a product that nobody wants? And it happens a lot. It happens so many times. But the, here's a great part. The product could be good. It just might need to be tweaked. It might need to be blue. It might need to be orange, whatever. There's so many things that come into play when you could get it out there and really test who your target market is, that's Marcy, that is such insider information because you know, you and I know these so-called consultants, they're always going to say this top level stuff, easy stuff. Oh, go do a patent search and then uh, you know, fill out this form and I'll tell you that that's all bull. It's the real yeah. deal, is like what you just said. If someone yeah. buys your product, it's a hit. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I was you know, when I started thinking about sharing this information with the world, I thought, I wonder what people are already saying about validating a product. I'm curious what in inventor coaches say. So last night I read an article that just blew me away. I mean, he, it was a very serious article and it, you know, it's basically about you run a patent search to make sure that you're not infringing. And then you do a competitive online search to make sure it's not already out there. And I thought, Oh my gosh, <laughs> that is so not the that is so not going to help you. First of all, if as we talked about before, if it is already out there, that's a good thing. 
And I, I really believe what this article was saying is, is if it's already out there, then you know you can abandon it and move on to your next idea. And what a miss. Yeah. So, you know, that's what gets so frustrating to me about these quote unquote inventor coaches and, um, you know, that I don't know that they are real world or that they're reading out of a textbook or taking information off the internet or something like that. So I just really, you know, caution anyone out there that is getting information from that, you know, that type of a source to just really vet it and really, um, you know, play it against other information, make sure you're, you're looking under more than one stone before you make a major decision like that. And there's so much more to that validation process. My, as I said, I have a five step formula that I did put into a document that I want to give you guys for free. And so I don't know if you want to put it in your show notes, but you can just go and download it. Um, I put it at, what did I, it's, it's validate my And, um, no charge whatsoever, but you can, you know, it's, it's all laid out there for you of exactly how I validate my own products and it's working for me. So I hope it helps other people too. Oh, it will. Anyone who's listening, I mean, it's so important. Um, and, and Marcy loves making money. I love making money, but we want to make products that are going to sell, that are going to continually sell. And that's, what's so important about it, you know? So it's, Super important, Marcy. I think it's so great that uh, not only are you going to give this for free, and I will put it in the show notes um, yeah. because it is important to do that. I just want to mention that you were saying about the reviews. It drives me crazy when I see a bad review, but now that you're talking about that and acting like, wait a minute, I can learn from those bad reviews. When I see a bad review on my product, I go nuts. I got so I used to get so mad, but now I'm going to use it as a tool, as, to, as a learning process. It's just going to make you better. And something that I've recently started doing that's been just invaluable for me is I'm connecting real world with my customers. And so I have found Facebook groups where, you know, I've really done some research to find out where are those people that would be buying my products or that are buying my products. And I'm, you know, creating videos and speaking directly to them and asking them. Like I even, um, I'm creating a new jewel, a travel, tra home and travel jewelry case. Um, and I wanted to know their opinion on it and what they would want incorporated. And I asked, you know, in the past, we like kind of go into our little offices and our little workspaces and do what we think people are going to want. And then we put it out there. But this has been so incredibly valuable. Like, the, you know, one of the key things that everybody said that I didn't incorporate into my last jewelry case was that anti-tarnish lining. Not a big thing. It's not rocket science, but so many people said it. It just was, you know, this, this light bulb of how, how did I not include that last time? And I, you know, had I not asked, I wouldn't have heard it. And I probably wouldn't have done it. So wow. it's, you know, and, and I also find people love a part of your process. Mm -hmm. I just for, I've got this coming out in March and these people helped me pick the colors for it. And so they're like a part of it. It's like almost like we're a team developing this mm -hmm. and they're all excited. And, you know, it's just really, it makes what I do so much fun. And so if they're, I don't know what everybody's, you know, different worlds are and what products they're creating, but if there's a way to find those real customers or who you think your customer is going to be and reach out to them. And um, I use SurveyMonkey a lot uh, because I do, you know, I think that anonymous surveying is really important. And so if you can ask them to fill out a SurveyMonkey for you, um, that can be really, really helpful as well. Wow. Marcy, this is like two different shows you've given so many tips. This is insane. That's why I love, you know, I was so excited to have you on. It's so much information in this real world. You're not just making this up. This is what you do. And that's yeah. what's so important. I want our listeners to realize that, you know, this isn't a script that we wrote. You know, this is like, hey, let's try to sell a product. We're not selling anything here. Right. You know? That's what I love. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I want people to realize that, you know, I do this. Marcy does this. Marcy does this a lot more than me. I don't even know how you're make, coming out with a brand new product. I don't know where you find the time to do this stuff. <laughs> Ask my family. Not a whole lot of sleep going on around here. <laughs> I know. The feeling. So, Marcy, as usual, so great to have you on the show. And, we're, and I want our listeners to know we're going to have Marcy on more frequently. We're going to start talking about some different causes that she has going on. We're going to talk about women in inventing is so important. And I can't wait to hear um, the shows and, and talk about that stuff. And it's going to be a lot of fun to start those shows up in the coming months. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it for sure. Right. Thank you for being on. And uh, for all you listeners, we will 
first off, um, uh, Marcy's website, marcymckenna.com. Go and visit her website. She's got some really cool stuff on there. And then I will put uh, the free download in the show notes and watch the video too on the Launch Network uh, on YouTube. And I'll put the video up there so that uh, we'll have the show notes for that too. And as usual, Marcy, thank you so much for being on. We've got a lot of cool information and we look forward to seeing you soon. Well, thank you, Carmine. It's always so much fun. I really enjoyed it. Take care. (laughs) Happy New Year. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.